Everyone put your hands together and say, Lord, I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you like David. I will praise and I will exalt you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, take some time to worship him. Every eyes closed. Can I have every hand lifted towards the heavens and say, Lord, I'll praise you. I will praise and I'll exalt your name, O Master, Lord. You alone are worthy of our praises. Come on, open your mouth and start praising him and say, Lord, you alone are worthy of our praises. Lord, in my life, O Master, Lord, there's one person who I can run to in the midst of my trouble. It's you alone, O Master, Lord. It's you alone, O Master, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Lord, you are bigger than my problems, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. We exalt you, O Master, Lord. We want to confess that God, whom I, who is within me, is bigger than the enemy of this world, O Master, Lord. There could be a number of reasons that I might feel weakened, Lord. But as you spoke to us, O Master, Lord, in my weakness, Lord, Lord, we pray that you will strengthen us, O Master, Lord, in my weakness, maybe my family doesn't know my weakness, maybe my friends doesn't know my weakness, but God who created the heavens and the earth, you know my weakness, you know where I'm struggling, Lord, so the morning I will say, in my weakness, Lord, make me strong, Lord, make me stronger in my weakness, Lord, we Lord, strengthen us in our life, O Master Lord. You alone are worthy of our praises. Savior, you can move the mountains. My God, you are mighty to save. Today morning, one thing you and I need to go in this presence and say, Lord, in the midst of all that, Lord, I know there is my Savior, Lord. 
I know there is a God who saves me. I know there is a God who leads me. I know there is a God who protects me. I know there is a God who heals me, Lord. I know there is a God who fights for me. I know there is a God who takes me across the Red Sea. I know there is a God in whose hand I am safe. Today morning, if you are feeling unsafe, if you are feeling worried, there is one God who says, Come unto me, all who are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Can we look to him and say, Lord, you can move the mountains in my life, for Master Lord. Savior, you can move the mountains. Savior, he can move the mountains. Oh, yes, Lord. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Altar of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Oh, Madam Savior. Savior. He can move the mountains, my God. My God is my dear. Oh, yes, Lord. He is my dear. Forever and ever. Forever. Altar of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. needs compassion, love that's never failing, let mercy fall on me, everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of the Savior, the hope of the nation. He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever, Lord. Forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Oh, Savior, Savior. He can move the mountain. My God is mighty. Oh yes, Lord. He is mighty to save forever and ever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Me as you find me, all my fears and failures, fill my life again. Give my life to follow everything I believe in. Now I surrender, I surrender my life, Lord, Savior. He can move the mountain. My God is mighty to save. Oh yes. Forever and ever, Lord. Forever. Altar of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Oh Savior, Savior. He can move the Strengthen us, O Master Lord. Lord, I know you are a God who strengthens us. Lord, remove the mountains in our life, O Master Lord. Forever and ever, Lord. You are the author of salvation. Conquer the way. Jesus, conquer the way. Oh, shine the light. Shine the light and let the whole world sing. It's singing. Of the risen King, Jesus, shine the light and let the whole world sing. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Savior, He can.
can move the mountains. My God is mighty to sing. Lord, we can pass. Lord, remove the mountains in our lives, so Master Lord. Lord, even if I don't see a way, by faith I confess, I will turn this mountain to be moved from my life, oh Master Lord. Lord, with faith as big as mustard see, Master Lord, we are proclaiming the only mountains that are blocking, that are hindering, hindering our progress. I confess, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus, and I pray, Lord, let every mountain be moved in the name of Jesus. Every mountain of financial debts be moved in Jesus' name. Every mountain of physical health be moved. In the name of Jesus, Lord, every obstacle in our lives, Lord, let it be moved. In the name of Jesus, Lord, anything that comes against us, so much, Lord, by faith we remove it from our lives, so much, Lord. Lord, we rebuke it. In the name of Jesus, every mountain of disbelief, every mountain of of disbelief in our life, so much, Lord. Lord. Lord, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, we, we proclaim now the victory of Christ over our life for us, Lord. Jesus, who proclaimed victory on the cross, we proclaim victory through the blood of Jesus, oh Master Lord. Lord, we pray that let this week be a week of victory, oh Master Lord. If people are expecting their results, if the people are expecting some break, through in their life. Lord, I pray, let this month, let the remaining week of this month be a month of redemption of us, Lord. A month, a days of breakthrough in our life for us, Lord. Because I know my God can move the mountains in my life for us, Lord. Lord, I pray that every mountain be moved in the name of Jesus, oh my Lord. Every obstacle be be a mood in the name of Jesus, oh Master Lord. Oh yes, Lord. Oh forever and ever, Lord. Author of salvation, heroes in conquer the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Put your hands together, everybody. Put your hands together and confess that your God is mighty to save gracious loving heavenly father lord as you remain standing can we pray for our state of tamil nadu we can we pray for the peace of god to come upon our state every eyes closed please stretch out the hands towards the heavens and say lord we come before you to humbly bow down to pray for our state of tamil nadu lord Lord, with all that's happening uh, in Tutukudi and in other neighboring uh, districts of Master Lord, we proclaim God's peace uh, over our state, oh Master Lord. Let your divine wisdom uh, intercede for us, oh Master Lord. Uh, you are a God who intercedes for us, oh Master Lord. So, in the morning, uh, we pray the Holy Spirit will intercede and release uh, your blessing upon our state, oh Master Lord. Uh, we pray that the Holy Spirit will intercede and bring a breakthrough in our state. So, Master Lord, we pray for all the people who are going through struggling, so Master Lord, all the people who are going through difficulties, all the people who are going through tears, so Master Lord, we pray that you will comfort them. Come on, everybody, open your mouth and pray for Tutukudi and pray, Lord, we pray for your divine peace and comfort to come upon our state, so Master Lord, as we pray, Lord, we pray that your peace and comfort. Come upon our state, so Master Lord, we especially pray for all the leaders uh, in our state. Pray that your wisdom will come upon them, O oh Master Lord. We proclaim the peace of Jesus uh, upon this state, O oh Master Lord. Jesus Christ, uh, who was resurrected, uh, he came into the room, into the closed room, and he said, Peace upon you. Today morning we proclaim and we claim the same peace upon our state, O oh Master Lord. Lord, we pray. That your divine peace and comfort will be upon us. Take especially pray for all the people who are suffering from losses, O oh Master Lord, who have lost their near and dear ones. Lord, we pray for your comfort, Lord. Lord, we pray God who comforts us. We pray the God who are God of compassion. 
will come down and comfort all the people who are suffering on my soul we thank you and we praise you as we turn to the word of god lord we pray open up our hearts and minds to receive your word we thank you and we praise the name of jesus christ we pray amen and amen please be seated in god's presence konjo konjo korchu ko pao is amen hallelujah 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 amen hallelujah praise be to god so in name i greet and welcome you all in the precious name of the lord and savior jesus christ uh before i go to the word of god couple of announcements uh, uh to the evening at uh, 5:30 sorry 4:30 we'll be having our choir practice so 4:30 we'll be having our choir practice and at um, Six o'clock, we'll be having our uh, youth fellowship. So I request all of you to kindly come for a youth fellowship that happens at six and required practice at 4.30. And today evening, uh, service will be a praise and worship service that will be led by the worship team. So as we, um, last week, the worship team decided that every sun, every last Sunday, the youth uh, are supposed to take care of the last uh, Sunday evening service. so this week will be a week of praise and worship i request all the youth to kindly take part in it and uh, i pray that god will uh, um, bless us and bless uh, and uh, bless our worship also and continue to pray for our state as as tamna is going through a lot of uh, trials and tribulations all of lot of difficulties please uh, remember our state in your prayer time and pray that god will bless us and also pray for our ministry as we are planning for expansion we have been planning for a few years for an expansion please pray that god will lead us and god will strengthen our hands to build his kingdom for him amen hallelujah so lingale hallelujah okay last week i spoke to you about god who strengthens us and god who strengthens us to fulfill our dream his vision in our life and i want to continue in the same phrase about god who strengthens us so i told you about three ways in or four types in which god strengthens us firstly i said god has already strengthened you and that's what he called of gideon and then then in daniel god strengthened him god touched him and he strengthened him and thirdly i said god strengthens you when you feel weak in your life and god gives you a promise that he will strengthen you and finally i told you god strengthens us in our weakness and i spoke to you about moses and now about isaiah and i also spoke to you about how the holy spirit will strengthen us and this week i want to continue in the same theme of god strengthening us and this is a very known passage can we quickly turn to philippians chapter 4 verse 13 it says uh, about how god strengthens us in our life and i want to talk i want to continue about this and very importantly i want to talk to you about uh, how god strengthens us in our weakness and not only that and how god uses our our weak people like us uh, and he strengthens us can we quickly uh, turn to uh, philippians chapter 4 was 13 and can someone read that please i can do all this through him who gives me strength and here you see paul says i can do all things through christ or through god who strengthens me he doesn't say i can do all things because i'm already strong he didn't say i can do everything because god has already strengthened me i already have that strength he was saying i can do all things through christ who strengthens me so he says i am a weak person so as i said last week when we come to the presence of god one thing you and i need to confess is our weakness many times when we come to the presence of god we talk about our strengths i'm good in this i'm good in that i fasted and prayed for so long i gave so much of tight i do so much of ministry we always keep talking about our strengths but here we see paul talking about god who strengthens us when we sit here what are we thinking how are we thinking i'm sitting here because i am strong or i don't have any weakness in our life if that's what 
we are thinking what of god says not that you have been strengthened already you know not because of your own strength so the morning you and i are sitting in the presence of god because of god who keeps strengthening us amen hallelujah look as christians we are not people without weakness as christians we are not people who don't have our faults in our life as christians we are not people who are perfect in life but we have a christ within us who strengthens us amen hallelujah can we you know when we read philippians chapter 3 there's some chapter 4 there's so something beautiful in verse 12 can we read verse 12 please chapter chapter 4 verse 12 i know i know what i is to be in me what can we can we read it please i know what is what it is to be in me what it is to be in me and i know i know what it is to have plenty what it is to have plenty i have learned the secret i have learned the secret of being content in any in any and every situation and every situation whether well fed whether well fed or hungry or hungry whether living in plenty whether living in plenty or in want so you see he doesn't say i know that i live only in plenty or he doesn't say i am always in strength he says even when i don't have plenty i can do all things through christ who strengthens me amen hallelujah he says not because of my stray or not because you and i don't have struggles in our life and i ask, if i need to ask all of us everyone will have our own struggle that's what paul is saying it's not that i don't have struggles but he says in my struggles there is a god who strengthens me amen hallelujah and can we read verse 14 also please it it was good of you to share in my trouble so yeah we say yet it was good he was when he was writing to this church he said yet it was good that you shared in my trouble so another confession saying i was in trouble and there were people who supported me amen hallelujah he didn't say i'm a perfect person uh, he didn't write to the church saying no something the church could be struggling but i as a called one of god paul the, the apostle a perfect person i don't have any troubles in my he said i did have troubles you did support me so when we come to the presence of god what are we confessing are we confessing that i am strengthened i am already strong because of my financial situation or i am already strengthened because of of the of the number of degrees i have in my hand or am i already strengthened because of my family background it doesn't mean you don't have troubles but in the midst of a trouble there is a god who strengthens you can we quickly turn to exodus chapter 15 verse 12 there we see moses who was leading this bunch of people the israelites into the promised land and has as, as he was going these people were the called ones these people who got the promise of god but as they were going as as they were going towards the promised land there came an obstacle in their life uh, there was this huge uh, red sea that stood in front of them who were these people the people who were hand picked by god who were chosen by god and who received a promise of god they would have been sent in the, when god told you i'm going to give you the promised land but as they went out to the promised land there was this huge obstacle that stood in front of them so imagine our lives when you and i have received the promise from god and when we go out in that strengthening god thank you for the promise i'm sure these people would have been singing as they were going uh, singing praises to god saying god i we thank you for 420 long years uh, we have been slaves uh, for 420 long years uh, we couldn't worship you 420 long years uh, there's a huge burden uh, of slavery on us uh, so they have been praising god uh, and worshiping god and telling god we thank you we praise you but you you chose us uh, you took us from the uh, slavery and you are taking us to the promised land everything looked very smooth in their life but suddenly there was a huge obstacle that came in their life there was this red sea that stood in front of them so what happens can we read the exodus chapter 15 verse 2 please the lord is my strength 
and my defense. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise Him. My Father's God, and I will exalt Him. Amen. He said, "The Lord is my strength and my defender." He said, "There is a God who strengthens me." And when did God strengthen them? In Exodus chapter fourteen, verse eleven and twelve, when they had obstacles in their life, when they had the Red Sea ahead of them, he said, "There was a God." Who strengthens me? Amen. Hallelujah. Till that time, uh, they would have been praising God, but as soon as they saw the Red Sea, maybe some of them wanted to go back uh, to Egypt, saying, "Maybe we cannot cross this. Let's go back to Egypt." Uh, when they thought about that, there was a huge Egyptian army was coming towards them. So now they were stuck between the Red Sea and uh, the the Egyptian army. they were blank they were thinking why did we come back they even uh, rebelled against to moses can we read was uh, 11 and 12 uh, sorry exodus chapter 14 was 11 and 12 please they said to moses was it because there were no graves in egypt that you brought us to the desert to die what have you done to us by bringing us out of egypt did we say to you did we egypt, say to you in egypt leave us alone let us serve the egyptians let us serve the egyptians it would have been better for us it would have been better for us to serve the egyptians, to serve the egyptians than to die in the than desert. to die in the so who are these people who want to die the people who receive the promise the people who god said i will give you the land that is flowing with milk and honey now they stand in front of a weakness so they wanting how many of us have weakness in our life and when one weakness or one obstacle come in our life are we like the israelites saying it was better that i didn't have to face this problem and during uh, these exam days prayer i i i i spoke in a church and i said exams in our life is very good because without writing your exams you don't get promoted the bigger the exams the bigger the promotion for example if you have a small exam for third standard to fourth standard it's a very small exam so when you write your third standard exam you don't expect to go to college amen you go to once you finish your third standard exam you go to your fourth but unfortunately in in our life at times we we just write our second standard exam and we expect a promotion for our college or we expect a promotion to whatever we want but if you, unless your obstacles unless your exams are big you cannot claim your position or the the, the position that god has kept in your life so in the life of the egypt uh, sorry in the life of the israel life when they saw the big obstacle now doubt started kicking in did all god really send uh, this guy called moses or this or this is moses trying to trick us and he did he bring us to die in this desert so the morning if someone is feeling weak because of the obstacles remember there is a god who gave you the promise amen hallelujah it's not a man who gave you the promise there is a god who brought you uh, brought you out of captivity there is a god who brought you out of captivity and said i'm taking you to the promised land and he is not he is not a man to change his word so the morning i'm talking to you and saying there is a god who caught hold of your hand and if he is walking in your if he when the, the time he caught hold of your hand he is walking you towards your destiny in the life of peter as peter was sinking in the sea as peter was sinking in the sea there was a god who reached out his hand and he strengthened him and now god says peter i know you're a weak person when there is a small storm in your life you you change your attention and sometimes when troubles come we change our attention from god that's what happened the word of beautifully said till everything was perfect and fine peter was slowly walking slowly and his eyes was always straight uh, was set on jesus christ uh, who was standing on the water and, and the moment there was a flood uh, sorry when the moment there was a huge uh, obstacle uh, a storm in his life uh, his uh, his attention uh, from jesus christ uh, turned towards uh, towards the storm 
and then he started to sink the problem is uh, when do you feel weak uh, is when you turn your attention from god uh, to your problem amen hallelujah he changed his attention uh, from seeing jesus christ uh, who gave him the promise saying come on peter you can walk on the water like me now the reason why he was thinking uh, is because he forgot the promise that Jesus gave he forgot that god who created the heavens and the earth has given him the promise he forgot the same water that jesus is standing and that is where he is wanting me to walk he forgot everything when storms came and when he forgot that when he changes attention from jesus christ to the storm he started to sink as he was going down he reached out his hand and there was this hand of jesus christ that pulled him out of the water and now jesus knew now i should not leave this peter alone because i know maybe two steps he will walk in faith but the third step what happens he, he might again look at the storm he might drown now what did jesus do jesus was catching hold of his hand and now now peter and jesus both were walking towards the boat what of god says as soon as they got into the boat the storms calmed down the storm still was uh, was was very much uh, alive when jesus was holding his hand even when jesus was holding his hand even when jesus was walking with peter the storm was still there but the difference was now there was a god was strengthening him amen hallelujah there was this god who caught hold of his hand and said now peter i'm not go letting you go alone because the moment i leave you the moment i let you go i know you will look at the storm i know when you look at the storm you will start sinking in your life so the morning god is telling you i am holding your hand in your weakness you will find strength in him amen hallelujah now he says don't worry that this that, that, that this uh, the sea will sink you don't worry that the water that you're walking on will sink you because there is a god who is holding your hands one word from this god will calm the sea one word from this god one rebuke from this god will stop will will stop any 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 situations in your life now that god is saying don't worry peter i am holding your hands and i am holding your hands until you get to the boat i am not letting you go today morning the same god is looking at us and telling uh, until you reach your destiny i am not letting go of your hands amen hallelujah maybe sometimes peter would have let jesus hands but now jesus is saying no 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 now i will hold your hands you don't need to hold me my dear church today god is saying i will hold your hands and i will walk you to your destiny and that is the god who strengthens us amen hallelujah so far why was i sinking why was i feeling weak why was i going inside the inside my troubles why did i why did the struggles overcome me because i was walking all alone yes i received the promise yes i had faith when i had faith i started walking but when storms came my faith died away when the storms came i lost all hope now though your hope is being restored because that there is a god who strengthens you amen hallelujah why should i hope why should i hope that i will walk on this mountain why walk on this water because there is a god who's holding my hands amen hallelujah and that's what that's what moses said there is a god who strengthened us amen he didn't say we were so strong when the huge huge a red sea was in in front of us he didn't say we were all holding on to our faith none of us said anything uh, with uh, un, uh, any unfaithful words uh, or any 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 words of disbelief he confessed that we were weak all the israelites were weak but there was a god who strengthened us amen hallelujah today morning there is a god who strengthens you don't worry about the obstacles in your life don't worry about the obstacles that you might encounter in your life there is a god who strengthens you there is something that god, uh, god very beautifully god gave to me to over god gave them god gives us strength to overcome and not to fight at times we try to fight our way 
to overcome the battles but the israelites didn't have to fight but they overcame their enemy amen hallelujah the israelites didn't have to fight they would had to fight but the israelites didn't have to fight the egyptians but god helped them to overcome their obstacles god gave them strength to overcome and not to fight sometimes what happens we are very we are trying too hard to fight but there is a god who says a battle belongs to the lord amen hallelujah he said i will fight your own battles don't worry and that's what god told moses and that's what moses told the people of you you, you be still and there is a god who's working in your favor i know you are weak but just be still because at the background there is a wind that is coming that wind is going to make a way in your life amen hallelujah he said remain calm now he said remain calm be still and god will do a miracle in your life and And today morning god says uh, don't worry about fighting your battles uh, just be still hold on to your promise uh, because there is a the god who fights your battle and you can overcome uh, the enemy not because you fight because there is a god who's within you amen hallelujah don't worry about overcoming don't worry about fighting trust in the lord with all your heart with all your might with all your strength hold on to his promise what he says you don't have to fight but you will still be an overcomer amen hallelujah i'll quote this example again and again when 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 india plays against any any country but there are 11 players who play when he, when only those 11 players represent india but when they win all of us feel so happy why did we go and play along with them did we sponsor them did we go to the stadium and cheer them no we didn't do anything just belong just because i belong to india whenever the indian team wins i win i feel so happy because i win when the indian team wins so i mean that's what god is saying when you are on my side i will fight the battle for you amen hallelujah you don't have to worry about fighting just worry about overcoming god will help you to overcome the battles sometimes we might be very tired of fighting it could be our financial situation it could be a career it could be our life the morning god is saying the battle belongs to the lord amen hallelujah the battle belongs to the lord hold on to your promise secondly how does god strengthen us uh, can we quickly firstly i said uh, there is a god who strengthens us and now we're going to see how god will strengthen us so can we quickly turn to second corinthians chapter 12 verse 9 there's a god who strengthens us in our weakness in our troubles in our trials and tribulation when we when we feel weak when there are obstacles in our life there is a god who strengthens us but there are four ways in which in which how god strengthens us can we quickly turn to second corinthians chapter 12 verse 9 please he said to me my grace is sufficient for you he said my grace is sufficient for me for you for my power is made perfect in for my power is made perfect in your week today morning uh, last week since i spoke little elaborately on this part i will skip this but firstly because of his grace you and i are strengthened amen hallelujah because of because not because i've done something good not because i am already strengthened but because of his pure grace amen hallelujah maybe you and i might not be we worthy of it but it is because of my grace god strengthens you amen hallelujah because of his pure grace he strengthens you secondly psalms chapter 119 verse 28 the second way in which god strengthens you and me is through his word he says through his word you and i are strengthened can we read the psalms 119 verse 28 please my soul is weary with sorrow my soul is weary with sorrow strengthen me according to your word strengthen me of course secondly what happens firstly by his grace because of his grace 
we are strengthened second through his word you are strengthened sometimes when you might feel weak some might sometimes you might feel very tired when you open the bible when you start reading uh, your daily passage you might have a word that strengthens you so the morning card saying my word will strengthen you amen hallelujah hold on to the word of god hold on to your bible in the midst of your trouble in the midst of your tears in the midst of the time that you feel weak in the midst of the time you feel all alone hold on to the word of god uh, spend time some time meditating the word of god he said by my word you will be strengthened thirdly um, through my word you will be strengthened uh, thirdly isaiah chapter 40 was 31 firstly i said because of his grace you are strengthened secondly through his word you are strengthened and thirdly isaiah chapter 40 was 31 it says when you wait on the lord you will be strengthened unfortunately what happens when we weak we let go of god we don't spend enough time in the in the presence of god sometimes when troubles come uh, the first thing the first casualty will be your prayer life when trouble comes the first casualty will be your bible reading when trouble comes the first casualty will be your church when troubles come the first casualty will be the ministry that you are doing so the morning god is saying wait upon the lord and god will strengthen you amen can we read that please isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 please but those who hope in the lord but those who hope on the other translation is those who wait on the lord will renew their strength will renew their strength they will soar on wings they'll soar on wings like eagles like eagles so that's what you you and i you need to hope or you need to wait on the lord that god will strengthen you today morning if anybody feels weak in your life if anybody is feeling why is this situation coming back again and again anybody see maybe there isn't a, a solution from this problem maybe someone feels like i don't think i will be strengthened uh, i feel so weak i don't even feel like going to church today morning if anyone is feel like that the, the word of god is saying wait upon the lord and he will strengthen you amen hallelujah wait on the lord and he will strengthen you ephesians uh, chapter 3 was 16 the, the fourth way how uh, you and i will be strengthened the first thing i said uh, by his grace uh, through his word uh, when you wait on the lord uh, and by the holy spirit because of his grace through his word uh, when we wait on the lord and by the holy spirit uh, many a times we might feel weak but there is a holy spirit within us who keeps strengthening us amen hallelujah that's what the promise that jesus christ gave to his uh, disciples uh, when when the when the holy spirit fills you you will be strengthened amen hallelujah so long these were the the, the, the disciples were so scared uh, they were they were they, they were so they were scared they were locked inside uh, a room and they didn't even go out because they knew after jesus christ was crucified the next person who could be crucified could be me the next the next bunch of people who could be killed will be me so they were so worried so scared so they went and hid themselves when he said when the holy spirit fills you is that he will be you will be strengthened amen hallelujah sometimes you need the remorse all the time you need the holy spirit within you to strengthen you can we read ephesians chapter 3 verse 16 please i pray that i pray that out of his glorious riches out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner through being. his spirit amen hallelujah he will strengthen you through the holy spirit today morning if you are feeling weak ask the holy spirit lord strengthen me lord because you will know the difference in the life of the disciples the disciples who were so scared as soon as jesus was crucified the disciples were scattered as soon, not even before crucified when they came to catch uh, jesus uh, when they came uh, to the garden of gethsemane to catch hold of him uh, all the disciples ran away and even peter who said lord even if the entire 11 people uh, only on this 11 people betray you i will never betray you even that person ran away but 
when they sat together and when they prayed and when the Holy Spirit filled him. When we read from Acts uh, chapter 1 and when we read further, after the Holy Spirit filled him, these people became bold and they started to preach the gospel of God. Amen. Hallelujah. These people who were so scared, even when Jesus was alive, these people were so scared. But as soon as the Holy Spirit filled them, they became go bold. They became strengthened and they started to preach. They started to heal people. They started to do miracles in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. The fourth thing in the way that the uh, God um, strengthens you is by the Holy Spirit. Very quickly, because of His grace, uh, He strengthens us. Through His word, He will strengthen us. When we wait on the Lord, He will strengthen us. And finally, I said, by the Holy Spirit, uh, He will strengthen us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Finally, I want to talk to you about God uh, who uses the weak. Many times, we look at our qualifications and we say, I'm a very weak person. I'm a very weak person. I don't have the qualities, the talents, the abilities which other people have. Maybe I don't have the language. Maybe I don't have the family background. Maybe I don't, maybe I don't have the money. But today morning, there is a God who not only strengthens us, there's a God who uses the weak. Amen. Hallelujah. When you're feeling weak, the world might say you are weak, you are not qualified. But today morning, God says, if you feel weak, when you feel weak, there is a God who says, even in your weakness, there's a God who can use you. Amen. Hallelujah. Even when you feel weak, there is a God who will use you. Can we quickly turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27 to 28. The verse beautifully says, God chooses the foolish or God chooses the weak to lead the strong. So they want if you feel Lord, I'm worthless. If you feel, Lord, I'm good for nothing, Lord. I don't have the skills that I need. Maybe at this age, there are so many people who are shining in this world. They have a very good job. They are settled down. There are so many people who have so many multiple talents. But when I look into me, I don't have the talents. I don't have the ability. I don't have the money. I don't have the family background. I don't have people to support me. I feel so weak, Lord. If you feel so, there is a God who says, even when you are weak, even when you feel you are weak, there is a God who can still use you. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we read that please? First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27 to 29, please. But God chose the foolish. But God chose the foolish things of the world. Of the world. To shame the wise. To shame the wise. God chose the weak. Of God the chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. To shame the strong. God chose the lowly things. God of the chose world. the lowly things of this world and the despised things. and the despised things and the things that are not and the things and the things that, that are, are not, not to nullify the things that to are to nullify the things that are. The next verse also twenty. So that no one may boast. So that no one may boast. boast before him. Amen. Hallelujah. In verse 20, 28 beautifully says, God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things. And God, God tells you in the word of God about Joseph, a person who was despised by everybody. God, you look at David, his very own family despised him saying, you go take care of the sheep. It's okay, even if the man of God, Samuel, come, you go take care of the sheep because he's not going to choose you as king. Because you don't have the skills, you don't have the abilities, you go and take care of the sheep. Let your brothers come and stand in front of Samuel and he will anoint one of them. He was despised by his family. Job was despised by his wife, his friends, by everyone. If someone is being despised by someone saying, why do you still keep trusting in the Lord? You have had multiple failures in your Lord, in your life. Why do you keep saying Jesus in your life? Why do you keep going to church if when people despise you? Hold on to this promise because God says, I will use the lowly, I will use the people who have been despised. 
to lead the strong. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I can quote a small example from my life. Uh, all glory to God. And in my life, uh, as I said last week, I think I spoke a lot of things about how I have failed in my life and I'm a weak vessel. And so the morning as I was thinking about weakness uh, and how God strengthens and how God uses the lowly and how God uses the despised to, to lead the strong. Uh, as I started my, my, my career and in, in the social work field, I was someone who didn't have lots of skills. I didn't know what skills I had. I didn't know if I had the abilities. I couldn't speak a lot. I, I wasn't good at, uh, I couldn't sing, I couldn't uh, play music or I couldn't, uh, I was not good at my studies. So I was very bad and I thought, I don't know what next in my life. And slowly as God, as I was working and slowly as God was building. And last week in, in, in my, in six months back uh, in my organization, there was an, there was an opening. I, I work in a, in a, in a, in a, in an NGO and a, in a, in a, in a NGO. So I, I want to, I take care of the project, it's a small project and I, I'm taking care of the HR responsibility of the small project. So six months back, uh, there was this the senior HR who was retiring, who was the national HR for the entire organization. So he was asking me if I could take over his role because he was quitting. The first thing I said, no, no way. I said, I, I can't do it because I said, I didn't study for that. I studied something. I, I studied counseling. I studied medical and psychiatry, so I can never go into this. And he said, no. And then again, he came back. They, as, as an, they came back to me and said, this role, Lord, because we feel you fit here. I said, even if you want me to quit this job, I will quit, but I will not take up the responsibility. But finally, last month, at the end of last month, when, when I say, as you guys, most of you might know that this is the time of appraisals, the year in appraisals, they came up and said, now there is no other option. You have to take up this role. And I said, I, I, I kept telling all this, see, I'm not good at this. I cannot come on Sundays. I cannot uh, Saturday evening. I cannot work after this time. And I have, and um, I don't have, I don't know these policies. I haven't studied law. I don't know all this. I told everything. They said, it's okay. Even if you don't know, we know that you, you will do well. Uh, and they gave it to me. And last week I was just, and yes, last Saturday morning, I was meditating on, and that's what came to me. A person who was struggling in my life, not knowing what to do, there is a God who strengthens us. Amen. And this verse really touched me. People who are being despised by others, God takes, makes them to lead people who are strong. I mean, hallelujah. And in the organization that, that, that currently I work, there are multiple people with number of years experience. There are people with more experience than me. There are people with a lot of degrees than me. There are there. But still I know there is a God who leads me. I mean, hallelujah. I humbly all glory to God. I humbly submit my life to God and say, Lord, pure you. it's by your pure grace, Lord. It's not by my will, not by my abilities, Lord. I get a bit. <clears throat> when I look back at my life, I feel God has been leading. And a person who has been despised today morning, if anybody feels despised, Lord, Lord, I don't have what it takes, but all it takes is God Himself. Amen. Hallelujah. If you feel, I don't know, I don't have what it takes. Joseph didn't have what it takes. David did not have what it took to be a king. Nobody didn't have what it took to build an ark. Paul didn't have what it took to be a, such a great scholar and an apostle. All the fishermen, the disciples didn't have what it took to be disciples. But they had only one person in their life that was our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Just hold on to him. And people, if some of us feel despised, Lord, I don't have what it takes, but you have who takes you to, to, the, to your throne. I mean, hallelujah. This is a God who says, if you feel despised, if you feel the world has despised me, Lord, I don't have the skill, the ability, the knowledge, but there is a God who strengthens you. Amen. Hallelujah. Very quickly. Firstly, I said First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27 to 29, uh, there is a God who strengthens you. He says, he calls the weak 
to lead the strong god chose solomon god chose joseph god chose david in the life of solomon was something that was very astonishing in his life and i want to close the life of solomon when you look at life of solomon the way he became king the most astonishing thing because even before he was chosen as a king uh, there was his brother who went and sat on the throne who anointed himself as a king and solomon of all people and if you, and i'm sure most of all of you know solomon was a person who was born out of wedlock a person who was born to bachiba but today, but solomon of all people he should be the weakest of them all because when we stood along with his brothers and sisters he would have felt so weak lord i don't have the family background lord maybe even i don't know if my father david knows me i don't know if 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 i can be the king but in the other hand there was his other brother who took up the throne who sat on the throne who proclaimed himself as a king solomon who didn't have a family background he was born out of a wedlock this one person was struggling with his ability because he went to god and god i don't have the skills to he said god give me wisdom because i don't know how to lead this people there are four things that i want to tell you about solomon very quickly firstly there was someone who was already taken up his position can we can we read that please uh, can someone first kings chapter 1 verse 5 uh, and someone quickly turn to uh, first kings chapter 1 verse 11 so everything is going to be from first kings i want to tell you about four things that went wrong in his life but in spite of all that god used solomon to build uh, his temple can we read uh, first kings chapter 1 uh, verse 5 please now adonijah whose mother was hagit put himself forward and said so now his brother adonijah he took up the throne and he said i will be the king firstly solomon was someone who lost his throne he lost his opportunity to the morning if anybody feel i have lost that throne maybe he was like someone who was in a hurry adonijah to take up the throne and you all know what happened last week in in karnataka there was one person who claimed to be the chief minister who took up the throne but ultimately who ended up losing his throne someone of the least of the least who got 36 seats he was crowned as the chief minister today morning there is a card who says maybe someone would have already took, taken up your throne maybe uh, there is an adonija in your life who's already taken your throne secondly first king chapter 1 verse 11 solomon was born out of wedlock he didn't have a family background he was born to bachiba it's the second thing that disqualified him firstly he lost his throne to his brother second thing that disqualified him he was born out of wedlock thirdly first kings chapter 3 was seven he was very young his other his brothers were much older much fitter much stronger much more qualified to be a king thirdly he was disqualified because he was a very young person he was a young can we read that please um, first king chapter 3 was seven very quickly now lord my god you have made your servant king in place of my father david but i'm only a little child i'm only a little child he said i'm a very small so thirdly that disqualified solomon but he was a very little child and fourthly he was someone who didn't have wisdom who didn't have the desired wisdom to lead the israelites to the morning if there is there are things that disqualify you there are four things that disqualified solomon from the throne but god says i choose the despised to lead the strong amen hallelujah he chose solomon uh, who was despised by everybody he chose solomon who didn't have the skill who didn't have the age who didn't have the ability who didn't have the knowledge who didn't have the family background 
if God can choose a person like Solomon to have the knowledge, wouldn't have the family background. If God can choose a person like Solomon to lead the Israelites, if God can strengthen someone like Solomon to lead the Israelites, today morning you and I are worshipping the same God. Amen. Hallelujah. There's a God who strengthens you. And I want to leave you with this word. You don't have to fight your battle. God will help you to overcome your obstacles. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're feeling weak to fight your battles, just like what God told the Israelites. I know Israelites, you are all slaves for so long. You can't fight your battles. But there is a God who says, I will strengthen you to fight your battle. I will strengthen you. And I will make you an overcomer. Can we all stand in the presence of God? I want to close with that. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. There is a God who strengthens you. My dear church. My dear youngsters. There is a God who strengthens you. In your weakness. God who leads. Who, who makes the foolish and the despised to lead the strong. He says, God says, four things that you and I need to do because of his grace, he will strengthen you. Through the word of God, he will strengthen you. When you wait on the Lord, he will strengthen you. And by the Holy Spirit, you will be strengthened. Today morning in every eye is closed. Can I have every hand lifted? towards the heavens and say, Lord, I don't know where you are weak, which part of your life you are feeling weak, but I want to tell you, wherever you are weak, there is a God who strengthens you. Maybe your financial situation is weak. Maybe your health is weak. Maybe, maybe the skills that you have makes you feel weak. Maybe when you look at your future, you might feel weak. But I want to, strength, I want to tell you, there is a God who strengthens you. God who will strengthen you in your weakness. Don't worry about fighting the battle. You can still overcome your obstacle. Because there is a God who fights your battles. You be still. And there is a God who is fighting your battle. As we lift out your hands, just tell God, strengthen me, Lord. Whenever I feel weak, whenever I feel uh, betrayed, wherever I feel depressed, Pride, wherever I feel despised, Lord, uh, strengthen me, Lord. Uh, catch hold of my hand, uh, the Lord who caught hold uh, of Peter's hand, oh Master Lord. Uh, today morning, Lord, catch hold of my hand uh, and lead me to my destiny, Lord. Uh, gracious, loving, heavenly Father, Lord. Thank you for this. Thank you for this wonderful day, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the wonderful words that you have given to us, Lord. God who strengthens us uh, and God who leads us, oh Master Lord. Lord, I pray for everyone who's seated here, oh Lord. Lord, strengthen them wherever they might feel weak, Lord. Strengthen them and Lord, make them leaders in their life, oh Master Lord, wherever they are, Lord. Strengthen them and God who strengthens us, Lord. Uh, Lord, make us uh, lead. Uh, and Lord, we pray that you will fill them with your Holy Spirit. If someone feels despised like Solomon, if someone feels uh, they are not qualified like Solomon, Lord, God who chose Solomon, I pray that you will choose. God, stick with us, oh Master Lord. As we go to the Tamil service, we pray that you will lead us and will guide us, Lord. We thank you and we praise you in the name of Jesus Christ that you will lead us and we'll guide us, Lord. We thank you and we praise you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. The love of the Father, grace of the Son, Jesus Christ, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore.